This Gorkon training video is one in a series covering another feature found in Gorkon's scheduling module. To get to that, go to Projects, select a project, and under Project Management and Field Staff, the feature is called Scheduling. In this training video, we're going to discuss how to add new schedules and how to add tasks to those schedules. Corcon can track multiple schedules under a project with unlimited tasks in each. An example would be separate schedules for design and construction, or if there are multiple structures that are part of the overall project. I've already created one schedule under a project. I'm going to open that one to show a couple of the features and navigation. A schedule includes several views. There is a Gantt view, a resource view, where tasks are assigned to a company, contact, or piece of equipment. There is also a calendar view. There's a place for comments and a place for properties. This is also where you can edit the scheduled detail page back to Gantt. There's also a menu bar. There's global changes, email assignments, and filter tasks. The icon that looks like a wrench is a fix relationship issue tool. There's a save tool, a print, an export to PDF, an export to Excel. There's add a task, add a child task, outdent a selected task, indent a selected task, expand all rows, collapse all rows, zoom in, zoom out, zoom to fit window, and show and hide fields. A task is a work-related errand you want to track through completion. Examples of tasks are grade site, excavation footings, formwork footings, pour footings, and so on. A task ID is simply a numeric identifier for those tasks. This is also auto-generated by the system. The task ID is used when referencing the predecessor within the Gantt table. Tasks can be organized and indented. This indentation determines if a task will be a parent task or a child task, as shown here. The parent item is foundation, which is a summary of the tasks or child tasks that fall under it. You can contract or expand at the parent level. Parent items are a summary of all of the child tasks below them. They feature a start and end date, a duration in work days, the status or percentage complete, a predecessor, and you can assign resources. Notice that predecessors never reference a parent item and resources are always set at the task level. You also have an option to set the baseline or the base start and finish dates. Those can also be added to the columns you're seeing here. When Corcon calculates the duration, of a task, it will skip the days that you've set up in the calendar as non-work days. In this case, Saturdays and Sundays, where the week being Monday through Friday. You also have a color-coded status, not started, not started but delayed, in progress, in progress and delayed or completed. You'll notice that the predecessors for each item reference a task ID somewhere above it on the schedule. This prevents you from having circular references. Seldom does a task predecessor reference a task ID below it on the list. No predecessors reference a parent item. They always reference another task. The task relationships and predecessors are also illustrated in the form of these connective lines. The duration is proportionate to the numbers of workdays. There's also a global change button where you can select multiple lines and make changes. You can email assignments and you can filter the view of the tasks. Next, let's cover how to add new schedules. I'm going to go back out to the scheduling feature. 
Under the existing schedule, we're going to create a new one. We'll go to Actions and we'll add a new schedule. You have the ability to add a schedule manually. You can copy a schedule. You can import a schedule from a Microsoft Excel import template or from a Microsoft Project XML template. Assigning a prime contract is optional. Corecom will sequentially number these new schedules for each project as you create them. And let's give the schedule a title. And we'll select a calendar. Corecom provides the standard Monday through Friday and Monday through Saturday options. There's a separate training video on how to create custom calendars. I'm going to use my custom calendar, which is a five day work week and includes a list of holidays. I can also view that. We'll skip the comments for now and click save and view. First, I'm going to add a bunch of line items. Then I'm going to add a parent item and the child tasks that fall under it. Then another parent item. Next, I want to tell scheduling which items are the child tasks. I'm going to click focus on the first child task and I'm going to indent. Same for the next, same for the next. Under concrete, a parent item, I'm going to add the child tasks just by indenting. And you can see that you'll now have ability to roll those up into a summary. Next thing I want to do is go in and add a start date. And I'm just going to add the same start date for each of these at the moment. I'm going to let Corcon scheduling recalculate these when we get the rest of the information in. Notice that the descriptions for the parent items and the, the child tasks are all unique. None are duplicated. Now I want to add the duration in the form of work days. So the clearing and grubbing we're going to say is four days. The rough grading is six and dig footings will be three. Staking under concrete is going to be one. Form and pour footings, three days. Flat work, five days. Tear down the forms, one day. Next, I want to assign predecessors. So the first task on a schedule never has a predecessor, but the second one, we're going to say the predecessor for that is line two which is that one right there. And the dig footings, we're going to say the predecessor for that is both task IDs two and three. Next, we'll go down to staking. Staking will occur after rough grading. So we're going to make the predecessor for that the task ID three and click OK. Poor footings has to occur after staking. So we'll make the task ID for that number six and possibly we want to put a little lag on that. We'll say three days after line six is complete. So we'll put plus three. We'll do number seven for that one. And we'll do number eight for that one. So you can start to see the homonogram is starting to fill in based on what we've added. We may also want to use some of the nomenclature to adjust these relationships. So let's say the tear down forms, we want that to finish the same day that the form and pour flat work is done. So we're going to put FF for finish to finish after the predecessor task ID number eight, and then we'll click save. Now there's always a possibility we forgot something. So Let's go up and change the focus to the second task, which is task ID number three. 
and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to add a new row. And we'll give it a start date, December 27th. We'll say that's going to be a two day process. And we're going to make the surveying finish to start based on task ID number two. And that would mean that rough grading needs to start after task ID 11. Next, we want to save. And I'm also going to run the fixed dependencies. We can now go in and start adding the percentage complete, which is basically a way of updating the status. We're going to say this first item is complete. And we'll say this one's also complete. Notice each time we click save, scheduling recalculates the start and finish date. Maybe we'll put that back. Marking 100% complete. We'll say the rough grading is now 50% complete. And the footings 25%. And when we click save, you'll notice that the color coding on the homonogram has changed for those items based on the color coded across the top. Maybe we want to change this one item. So to do that, I'm going to move it back to 0% complete. And we'll make this one predecessor is task ID 2 but we want these to start on the same day. So we'll put start to start. Now I'll go back and mark that 100% complete and click save. And we'll go back out to scheduling. And there's our first schedule added manually. If you'd like to know more about this subject, we encourage you to go to the knowledge base articles to leads and projects, to scheduling, and review the options for creating schedules and adding and indenting tasks.